this as outrage over that executive order granting amnesty potentially to millions of illegals continues to mount. But the response of Capitol, Hill, of Capitol Hill's Republican leaders, some say, is, was predictably weak. At least that's if you ask Richard Vigory, uh, conservative direct marketing pioneer and author of the new book, The 100-Year War for the Soul of the GOP and How Conservatives Can Finally Win. And Richard, it's always great to talk to you. Thanks for being with us. Good. Let me just mention the title of the book is, is Takeover, and it deals with the importance of taking over the Republican Party from the current leaders, which is what we're going to talk about now, how we, weak the Republican leaders are. But Takeover is a book that tells people the importance of ch uh, changing Republican leaders. Yes, sir. And also, uh, Conservative HQ is a, a spot where folks can hear from you as well. Uh, let's talk about this. You want to you change the entire leadership. And, it, you know, some would say that the response not just from Boehner, but from other members of the Republican leadership, was predictable. What should Boehner have said, and what should they be doing right now if they were really serious about pushing back against this president? Well, there are any number of things that the uh, Republican leaders can, can do to show that they are serious uh, about uh, preventing this president from uh, acting in an unconstitutional, illegal way. Uh, and they can start with the power of, of the purse. Uh, they also should start with not taking anything off the table. As soon as this election uh, was over with, you had Republican leaders like John Boehner and Mitch McConnell saying that certain things are off the table. No matter what the president does, we're not going to consider impeachment. We're not going to uh, use the power of the purse, which would cause the president to shut down the government. We're not going to do any of those things that are going to be effective. So when you, you start by uh, saying what you're not going to do, you greatly weaken your hand and strengthen the uh, your opponent, the president's hand. So uh, they've got a you know a lame duck session coming up here. For starters, they should do nothing that funds the government beyond a couple of months. Uh, wait uh, till they have a majority in January, February, to deal with this problem in a very serious way. But uh, use whatever power the purse they have right now to uh, try to uh, uh, undo what the president has done. Now, of course, everybody knows what happened the last time Republicans got blamed for shutting down uh, the government, even though it takes two to tango in that type of situation. There are still folks who argue that that can be done again, but with a different outcome this time. It can be done in a more controlled way, and the Republicans can actually uh, win the argument uh, of the, the public relations argument if they were to do it again. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, totally. Uh, the, one of the problems that Republicans have run into when they shut down uh, the government, uh, as they did last year, is the Republican leaders' heart and head is not in it. So they're not providing leadership. Uh, they're AWOL in the fight. But if the Republican leaders, and as well as the, uh, the troops in the Congress, uh, the uh, grassroots, if everybody's supportive of this and they go uh, against the president in a united way, uh, you know, uh, they'll have a success. The American people will support them. Uh, the Republican leaders actually have a moral obligation to do everything with that's legal and moral to oppose the president when he has violated the Constitution by granting amnesty to five million uh, uh, illegal aliens. And uh, they campaigned on this issue. The re people gave him a big victory, John, uh, in uh, just a few weeks ago. And if they walk away from this now, they will lose the trust, as they should, of the American people. And that's one of the reasons, probably, quite frankly, that uh, we, we hear the words, the talk from the Republican leaders, Boehner, Mitch McConnell, et cetera, but there's not a uh, feeling of trust with the Republican leaders. And quite frankly, American people don't trust uh, Washington, D.C. Congress is, what, well, about 10 you, you mentioned months. You mentioned the historic elections we just witnessed here, but if you look, you know, it, of course it was a big win for the GOP, the Republican Party, but if you look at the folks who actually won, not necessarily the case because a lot of the uh, more establishment candidates were the ones who were successful in a lot of the primaries here. That being said, you know, is there any chance that there is going to be actual change at the top and when it comes to the leadership? Because it well, seems like uh, some new names, but a lot of the same ideals, people loyal to this current leadership in the party. But what I uh, tell conservatives when I speak and write, uh, John, is uh, our number one goal is not to win elections. Uh, and, and that's important, but that's not number one. Our number one goal is to save America to change America and go back to our founding father's dream of a constitutional limited government republic. And uh, we're having that effect. Every conserv every Republican 
uh, who ran and won this year ran as a born again conservative. Not a one of them out there ran as a big government uh, Republican. And uh, so, in fact, all of the newly elected senators, the, the nine of them that we assume uh, will be sworn in uh, next January, except for one, Cory Gardner in Colorado, they all ran against amnesty. So they have a moral obligation, uh, those new ones as well as the uh, uh, ones who won re-election, to follow through and oppose this president in every effective way on amnesty. Actually, they won on three big issues, one amnesty two, national security, and three, the culture of lies and corruption uh, that's, uh, you know, in, uh, embedded in this uh, Obama administration, including Obamacare, etc. So they have a moral obligation to follow through on the great victory the American people just gave them. Well, you mentioned uh, immigration playing a huge role, and you're right there. Dave Bratt beating Eric Cantor, maybe the best example uh, of that, but Bratt not exactly aligned with a lot of these uh, Tea Party groups until after his victory, but important uh, to mention that as well, though, uh, Richard Vigory. Um, we're going to we about time for one more question, I guess, Richard. And, you know, again, uh, they, these guys who are elected, they, they all ran as conservatives and they talked a good game during the elections. But do you think that will carry through now uh, once they take their seats and their newly elected positions? Well, whether they carry forward with their commitments and promises depends heavily on the grassroots. The people listening to us right now, if they continue to keep that pressure through phone calls, through meetings, uh, through letters, uh, and keep that pressure on the Republican leaders, I think they will follow through for the most part. But if we walk away and uh, kind of disappear and go back into our communities, our families, our churches, all that, very important. But if we fail to keep the pressure on these Republican leaders, I'm afraid they will uh, move towards uh, their habit, which is uh, cooperating uh, with the Democrats and growing government. But if we keep the pressure on them, I think there's a strong chance they'll govern as limited government constitutional conservatives. All right, Richard Vickery, the book is called Take Over the 100 Year for the Soul of the GOP and How Conservatives Can Win. Richard Vickery, thanks for joining us and happy Thanksgiving, sir. Thank you. Good to be with you, John. All right, we're back with more here right after this Newsmax Now update.